Today on the newscast, Iran threatens drone attacks against Israel and the United States as Israelis head to the polls yet again. Will Bibi prevail? Get all the breaking details next. Hey folks, I'm Rich Dackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman Newscast. The day is finally here. Today, Tuesday, November 1st, is the day that Israelis head to the polls for the fifth time in under four years. Hard to believe. We've been talking about this for the past several weeks now here on the newscast. And as I come to you around noon Eastern time here in the United States, Israelis are flocking to the polls uh, in the highest numbers that we've seen there since 1999, according to early returns. So clearly there is a lot of desire among Israelis to break this political deadlock once and for all and hopefully elect a governing coalition that has some legs and has some staying power. Now, Benjamin Netanyahu, the former prime minister, perhaps future prime minister, head of the Likud party, his party is expected to win the most seats. But folks, here's the deal. Bibi will have to form a coalition with other parties that enables him to reach 61 seats in Israel's Knesset. Without those 61 seats, you cannot have a solid governing coalition. And that's been the problem over the past few, four years. Bibi would form these coalitions and then the coalition would kind of dissolve because many times in Israel, you'll form a coalition with your political opponent, people who you are not on the same page with ideologically and politically. So many times these coalitions unravel because of that fact. So we shall see, uh, can Bibi form a lasting coalition this time? Again, the fifth election in Israel since 2019 alone. We don't have the results yet, of course. Polls close in Israel at 10 p.m. That's 10 p.m. Israel time. They opened at 7 a.m. in Israel. So a long day of voting uh, for Israelis. And hopefully we will have a result for you tomorrow here on the newscast. We'll actually have a Watchman newscast live stream for you tomorrow between 4 and 5 p.m. Eastern time. Be sure to join us live 4 p.m. here on the channel tomorrow and bring your questions for our Q&A session. We'll have a lot to talk about uh, in the wake of the Israeli election. By the way, if you're trying to figure out this whole crazy political process in Israel, how it works, what it all means, we recorded an Israeli election preview in Jerusalem just a few days ago with our good friends Alex Trayman and Ruthie Bloom of JNS.org, a Watchman Israel election preview from Jerusalem. That was posted here on the channel on Friday, October 28th. Folks, just go to Newscast here on the homepage. It's in our archives. Israel election preview and extended newscast where we really broke down the entire Israeli political system, how it works, what to expect going forward. So I strongly encourage you to check that out. Uh, October 28th, again, it's right under newscast. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe to the channel right here on YouTube and click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted. We would love to have you shoulder to shoulder with us here for such a time as this on the Watchman News Channel. So we've got the election happening. That's a very big deal in the Middle East today. And just one week before the U.S. midterm elections, by the way, another major, major election coming up. And one day after the elections in Brazil, where it appears that the leftist candidate and ex-con Lula da Silva has prevailed. So we're keeping a very close eye on that radical left-wing turn uh, in Latin America, which seems to continue. Hey, Brazil is the largest country in all of South America, the fifth largest country in the world. So if Brazil goes hard left once again, folks, that does not bode well for Latin America. Again, that leftward shift has continued in recent years. Speaking of a shift in all the wrong ways, the Iranian regime is at it again. Now, the Iranian Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps has a very active social media presence, and they have a channel on Telegram 
Well, they've posted many threats against Israel and the U.S. over the months and years, and they've got a new one on their Telegram channel. Iran's IRGC, the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps, is threatening drone attacks against Israel, against U.S. bases in the Middle East, and against Iranian dissidents. Now, Iran is very proud, as we've laid out many times for you here in the newscast, of their growing drone program, attack drone program. We've seen video out of Iran, uh, out of warehouses and storage facilities and military drills showcasing Iran's drone prowess, drones of all shapes and sizes. And it has extended to the point where Iran is now supplying Russia, as we have reported here in the newscast, supplying Russia with attack drones that Russia is using in Ukraine. Yet it goes further. Russian soldiers were in Iran training on how to use these drones. And now R Iranian advisors from the IRGC are reportedly in Crimea and other parts of Ukraine, shoulder to shoulder with Russian soldiers, actually helping them to operate these Iranian-made attack drones. And these drones have been used there in Ukraine, folks, to lethal effect. Just about a week and a half ago, uh, we had several people killed in Kyiv as a result of one of these so-called kamikaze or suicide drones that are now mass-produced in Iran. And Iran, of course, is handing that technology off throughout the Middle East as well to the likes of Hamas and Islamic Jihad in Gaza, Hezbollah in Lebanon, the Houthis in Yemen, and those various Iran-backed militias in Syria and Iraq. I call it the ring of fire that surrounds Israel right now, a ring of fire uh, laid down by Iranian proxies that form that ring of fire. And folks, they are armed to the teeth with attack drones supplied by their masters in Tehran, as well as ballistic missiles, uh, rockets pointed at every inch of the Jewish state. That's where these threats on Telegram come in, by the way. Iran showed footage of U.S. bases in the region, which already, in Iraq and Syria, have been attacked many times by rockets and drones fired by and used by Iranian-backed groups. So this is no surprise. There's a track record there. And of course, threatening Israel, which the video calls the occupied Palestinian territories, and also threatening the MEK, uh, an Iranian dissident group. Now, that is no coincidence, I don't believe, the threat against Iranian dissidents, as we have protests continuing to rage in the streets of Iran right now. Uh, Iran announced yesterday that it was going to put 1,000 of these protesters on trial publicly, basically a public show trial. Some of them are facing the death penalty. Of course, this all started, folks, on September 16th with the death of that 22-year-old Iranian Kurdish woman by the name of Masa Amini, who was reportedly killed by Iran's so-called morality police for the supposed crime of wearing her hijab, her head covering, in an improper fashion. So add all of that up, and one thing to come out of this that we're watching closely is the status of the Iran nuclear deal. Let's break it down. We've got new video threats to attack the U.S. with drones from the Iranian regime. We've got the protest raging in the streets. We've got hundreds of protesters killed by the Iranian regime's goons. We've got Iran helping Russia openly in Ukraine, supplying it with drones, and reportedly considering Russia, uh, supplying Russia with ballistic missiles as well. Add all of that up. And finally, the Biden administration is saying, right now is not a good time to pursue the Iran nuclear deal. Thank you. It wasn't a good time in, I don't know, 2014, 2015, when we had the original incarnation of this Iran deal hammered out. And it wasn't a good time in, in January 2021 when Joe Biden took office and made one of his initial foreign policy pillars the revival of that Iran nuclear deal. And Iran has rewarded him uh, with his faith in the regime and his faith in a new deal by consistently attacking U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria, by threatening to assassinate former Trump administration officials on U.S. soil, by instigating wars against Israel via Hamas in May 2021, via Islamic Jihad in August of this year, 
So Iran's dubious track record continues. Now it's cracking the skulls of protesters in the streets, aiding Russia in Ukraine as that Russia-Iran alliance grows. Finally now, the Biden administration is saying, maybe we should kind of put those plans for a new Iran deal on hold. But folks, uh, don't ever underestimate the naivete and the willingness and desire to appease shown by the left in the United States and Europe. The deal may look dead right now, but I've compared it before to a kind of vampire or zombie that refuses to die. And rest assured, there are forces here in the West that would love to revive that Iran nuclear deal. As soon as Iran, things die down, perhaps with the protests, look for another move eventually, perhaps in months, perhaps it's next year, but it's coming. You'll see a push once again by Western diplomats to come back to the table with the Iranian regime and try to hammer out a new Iran nuclear deal. I think, was it Albert Einstein who said the definition of insanity is doing something over and over and, and expecting a different result? There you have it. Hey folks, we will be watching all of this very, very closely. Keep the entire situation in prayer. By the way, keep the people of Iran in your prayers uh, who are in the streets right now who are speaking up for freedom from this wicked regime. And remember, there's a growing Christian population in Iran, perhaps the fastest growing church in the world. So God is moving there amid all the evil. God is moving because you can't stop the gospel. Until tomorrow's live stream, 4 p.m. Eastern, thanks so much for joining us here on the Watchman Newscast. God bless you, and remember, never hold your peace. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.